It's like a German's paradise. Look at all those trees, Opie. You can choose any single one of them. All of them are to your watering needs. And yet you still stand here by me and look at me. Yeah, that's because you're a dork, Dad. I know I am. I've embraced it. How would you like to live right next door to a truck stop? That'd be great, right there. I am right where I left you guys off in our last video. We were in Lamar's, Iowa at uh, Quick Star or Quick Trip to you Northerners. Opius decided to just chill out, relax, and lay around, even though he just got done with a full night's worth of sleep. Today we're gonna do a real quick uh, tour of First Class. First Class is my 1999 Kenworth W900. Everybody knows my truck, but we do have a lot of new subscribers, so bear with me. It'll be just a quick, uh, maybe two, three minutes worth of the video, and I will tell you a little bit about it. It saves asking questions in the comment section, and uh, it just kind of lets people know a little bit about her. First class is a Kenworth W900L. It has a C16 Caterpillar in it. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Come on, come on. I recognize, I recognize there's just too many people here for you, isn't there? There's people everywhere. Hey, Dad, you're the one holding the camera talking to a dog. Yes, are you ashamed of me? Um, well, I don't want to say it, but there's a good possibility you're embarrassing. Yes, I know I am. I know I am. Like I was saying before I, uh, before I pretty much embarrassed my German Shepherd, is it's a C16 Caterpillar, 600 horsepower. Um, I think I think I last read around 2,050 uh, foot-pounds of torque, and that is a bone stock engine, and that's what uh, first class is uh, has in her is a is a bone stock caterpillar you don't really got to do a whole lot to those things they're just beasts right out of the get-go thank you have a good one you too oh, thank you sir so we got breakfast no we got lunch and dessert all in the same time at the end of our last video, we were making this exact same walk with breakfast in hand. That Kenworth W900 there has a 285 inch wheelbase, 355 gear ratio on those rears, an 18 speed Eaton Fuller, Eaton Fuller transmission, setting on low pro 24.5s. He is going to be very upset because I did not get him anything. He gets on his hunger strikes. You guys who have been subscribers to the channel for a long time know how his hunger strikes go. He can actually go quite a few days. I've seen him last up to four days without food and three days without water. He gets a little weak, like right now he's a little weak, a little sluggish, and uh, there really isn't much you can do. It's because I've given him a cheeseburger or two in the past, maybe, and um, maybe some beef jerky. Well, then he gets to the point to where he thinks he can have it all the time, and he refuses to eat his dog food. You know I'm talking about you, don't you? Yeah. we we'll are have to get him to eat something here, but... I put dog food in his bowl, and if he eats it, he eats it. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Alrighty, let's continue our tour. Lunch is done. Sorry, Opie, it was chicken. Yeah, I know. Where he's laying right now is a couch, because First Class has a 86-inch studio sleeper. He gets the bottom bed. That's all his bed right there, because it's folded down. It's a couch folded down to a bed. Extremely uncomfortable to sleep on. 
I'm not saying that bed up there is much more comfortable, but that is my bedroom upstairs. He doesn't seem to mind. Speaking of tours here, look at that junk drawer. Or, uh, that, that, it's junk food. The entire thing up there is junk food. And guess what? It's full. That means I've been buying it and buying it, but not eating it. So I'm doing pretty good here, guys. That it, it's there, but I, I haven't been eating it. The 86-inch studio sleeper has your normal closets. It has this closet right there. I keep uh, spare parts, oils. Everything I can't fit outside the truck goes in there. Dirty clothes on the bottom. That right there is my food cupboard. I keep my cereal in there. And my bowls. And uh, that's about it. Over here, subway closet. This is where my clothes are at. This is a storage thing. I keep uh, what's in there, Opie. We put those paper towels in there from that previous video. They're in there. Um, my little booty things that I put over my feet in muddy conditions are in there. A few other things. Uh, the dog food bowl. Two drawers that I have filled probably six years ago, and uh, I basically never really open them much. I just need to pull them out, throw everything away that's in there. But it's one of those things when you open them, you see it and you go, Ooh, I've been looking for that. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So then you don't get rid of anything. That's how that rolls. First class has a lot of windows. There's, there's windows here, 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 here. And that is one of our biggest fallbacks. There's too many windows. I love the looks on the outside of all the windows, but from the inside point of view, that lets in an insane amount of heat. So, give and take. I wanted the 86 inch studio sleeper, so I got the 86 inch studio sleeper. The 86 inch studio sleeper comes with an insane amount of windows. I don't even, those top ones up there, I don't even open those. Oh yeah, that's my sunroof right there. It has black Gorilla tape over it. I need to get the black vinyl, black vinyl it, and make it look more good, but I don't. I hate sunroofs and trucks. Once again, though, this is the truck I wanted. It had a sunroof. I figured I will make this work. In the wise of gauge clusters or gauges in the truck, it, it's pretty basic. You're not going to get too crazy. You still have all your water temps, your oil temps, your oil pressure, your engine oil, your fuel oil filter restriction, uh, your turbo boost pyrometer, your air gauges, how much air is in your tanks, how much air you're applying, your fuel gauge, um, your suspension load, which is down there. That suspension load kind of gives me a ballpark of how much weight is on the tail end of the trailer or tail end of the truck. Um, your two uh, gauges there are your front and rear differentials, your transmission. So it's not an insane amount of gauges. It's just uh, what I would consider every truck should have. If you're from Lamar's, Iowa, have you guys ever recognized just how many places you have to eat here? I think if I lived in Lamar's, I would probably go broke. There is a food place every 20 feet, and we're on the, not the outside, but the not downtown part. Downtown part's got more food. Just running down this road, we've counted 10 places to go out to eat. You go downtown, I think there's probably at least another 10 there. So you could eat out somewhere different every single night. I'd go broke. miles are on the truck the odometer doesn't work in here it, it, it's on the to-do list guys there's a really big to-do list with this truck luckily it has the factory ECM and I can just plug it in and it will tell me how many miles 
last time we plugged it in, she had 2.2 million miles on it. So she's getting up there a little bit, but that's not a crazy amount for a 25-year-old uh, truck. How many miles are on the engine underneath the hood, though? I can't tell you. I bought this truck from an extremely shady person out in Ohio, who I think now from the, what I heard is in jail. But I'm not 100% positive on that. I know she's running strong. She still pushes pushes 70 pounds of oil pressure. She's a solid engine. We've done work to it. And I'm sitting here trying to remember what we've all done to it. I know we've put a new head on it. Maybe a couple other things. We dumped a lot of money into this truck. But she's paid for, and that's all that really matters, right? Our current thing that we're spending money on now is we're just trying to get the ride more comfortable. So every time she goes into the shop, I do something to make the ride a little better. But I do think I am gonna stop and grab some new shocks again. Man, these roads are just beating the living crap out of it. Oh, yeah. This is Mobile, Iowa, right here that we're going through. Yeah, we're on a state highway right now. Let me retract that. This is a county highway in Woodbury County, Iowa. We're going 30 miles per hour. It's just a tad rough. I guess the big question I do see in the comments a lot even from subscribers that I've had for a while is, why do I call my Kenworth W900 first class? Ugh, holy crap. Let's find some smoother roads. If you're wondering, yes, this is a town. This is Holly Springs. I think there's two or three houses along that road right there. And that's it. I actually remember when uh, it used to have stores, that little town back there. I don't remember the stores being open, but they would, uh, it was like a boardwalk. They all had overhangs over them, and they were all made out of wood. That's all now, uh, now a cornfield, but I can remember the buildings. Well, you're eager to stand up now, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, you are. What kind of a tour was that? That was horrible. I'm sorry about it. We're home. He wants to get out of the truck, but I want to finish this video. No. Retract that. We are home. He wants to get out of the truck, but the video is not done. We're not finishing the video. Actually, I have a really cool surprise at the end of this video. Yes, it's one of those clickbait things. Stay tuned to the end of the video, and it's it's something that's just really awesome. <sighs> There's the food cupboard that I had the door shut to. Nothing real fancy. Um, just bowls, silverware, cereal, and some ramen that's been there for about uh, three, four years. I keep drawings here, or colorings of the kids' drawings and colorings. 
that the kids made me um, uh, a long time ago. A nice little table to eat off of or work off of if you were into the desk style of work, uh, more of the steering wheel style of work. There's that closet that you guys stared at the door of. Dirty clothes, electronics, fluids, filters, cleaning supplies. Here's the inside of the other closet that I showed you a wall of. Opie stuff, dog food, medication, treats, my clothes, extra pair of shoes, my power inverters back there. In here is... I have a door weather strip that I have not put up yet, an extra headset, um, some other stuff. Oh, our torch is in there. Who remembers this? Come on, don't rip. Wait, ripped. One of Dad's chemotherapy treatments. I put that on his head. Why is that wet? That got wet. That rain we went through was horrible. Everything, I think, got wet. We need to reseal the roof. In here is uh, um, my window cover. Every once in a while I put that up. Those paper towels that Opie was fighting at in a previous video. And then down here, those shelves I was talking about, those drawers. Open this up. We have a dash camera that I probably should get back up one of these days. Filing stuff, a map. Wow, it's been a while since we've used the good old paper map. We pretty much know everywhere we're going. And I wasn't kidding. This is truly, this mic is the mic I told you guys in the last video that was broken. Why am I keeping this? It, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Shelves, keep the vacuum. That is actually full of change. And I just a lot of weight there a drone that we never fly the toaster microwave bed 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 tripods turbo fan I think we've showed you everything now I think that was a more detailed tour of the truck that one should be a little better it dawned on me as we were driving home that I, I I did a tour of the truck and just showed you guys a bunch of closed shelves. I don't, I don't know, I don't know why I did that. So why do I call first class first class? Um, it, it's kind of a silly reason, but there's actually two reasons. Before I got first class, I used to drive a 1986 Freightliner. Um, it was a flat top with a coffin sleeper on it. So when I got a hold of this truck with that 86 inch studio sleeper, I was like, holy smokes, this is like first class. That was a big one right there. Another reason is when I flew out to Ohio from Omaha to get this truck, I was standing in line and a gentleman came over that works at the airport and he goes, sir, I have a first class ticket here for sale if you'd like to buy it. And I made the comment to him, um, no, I don't need to fly first class. But he only came to me. And I was thinking, this is odd. Why would he only come to me? Well, I am six foot four, 300 pounds. The plane that I got onto is what they would consider a puddle jumper. And I had a window seat. So I spent the next, well, by the time we sat in the plane, took off, landed, sat in the plane, I spent the next probably four hours sitting like this. So I always made the comment, made the joke, first class. But her main reason for first class is because inside that sleeper, to me, is first class. I can stand up to get changed. That was amazing. After many, many years of having to lay down to put your pants on, I could stand up to put my pants on. I could have a refrigerator. I could have shelves. I could have storage. Best part of all, if you don't want to hear anybody, you can just idle the truck up, let those pipes sing, go all the way back in the sleeper, and you're in your own world. And I couldn't do that in the old Freightliner. It was just a mattress, and that's it. 
freight What's line. that page? When in the freight line we had to sleep foot to face. So you're like your face and your head would be right here and your toes would be right here and my head would be right here and your toes would be right here. Because when I trucked with you, that's what we do. And then the air conditioner would constantly break all the time. Always broke. Every time every you time curved. I came. Every it was time. always broke. Every time you rode with me, it, <laughs> it was, was busted. So hot in there. It was a black truck, it, it would get so very hot. hot. When do you leave for work? Five minutes. Oh, okay. That's too bad. That's too bad. Opie's eating buns right now. Jax is just chilling. The surprise is we're at a baseball game. There's a special little girl singing the national anthem. Fans, it's Free Shirt Friday, presented by Apple. Dan Brocher. Fans, will you please rise if you're able, remove your hats, and turn your attention to the flags flying out in center field. The Sioux State Explorers are pleased to welcome MVAOCOU. Tune Squad for the singing of our national anthem. Baseball is so boring. I stayed for like a couple quarters or innings, whatever you guys want to call it. I got hit with a ball. Yeah. I was standing on the other side of the big uh, announcer's booth. Um, getting me some dipping dots out by the fence. I heard somebody say heads up. I kind of went like this it Smacked me in the back of the leg I'm like this is great. I'm at a sport that I think is about as boring as watching paint I can stop using that. I like watching paint dry But it was very boring and I get hit with a ball, but Paige did a magnificent magnificent job now I'm going to try to upload this video and uh, well it all matters on what kind of mood YouTube is in if it doesn't throw a copyright for our national anthem which is completely ridiculous but it might not but if it does I will have to bring it back down and I will cut it up so if her song is cut if the song is all cut up it's because of copyrights you guys thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed the tour I hope you enjoyed tater tot Stay safe. You guys stay safe. And as always, I'll see you next time.